Hi all, thank you for being here. So uh, I'm Georgios and this is going to be a talk about things that I learned in the like, past few months. So I haven't been doing this like type of work for too long, so please don't like judge me. Um, so okay, I think everybody in this crowd knows this. So this is like the snark. I know something. I want to outsource like the verification to somebody, and um, like how am I going to like prove this computation like in a short way? Like I have to encode this computation in some proof. Um, the toolbox that uh, we're using. So I want to take a, like a very practical approach for this talk is like uh, a bunch of things. So for the SNARK, usually we do pairing-based cryptography, some form of accumulator, which usually is some Merkle tree, some like vector commitment or something. And uh, we have some assumptions. So like all of these protocols that we've seen so far, they're like either in the algebraic group model or the generic group model, um, which like uh, my understanding is that currently they're like s slightly stronger assumptions than like the usual ones that we'd have. If we want to do recursion, usually you'd need like some curve that is like a like that has some cycle like but Sean like may have like some breakthrough on that and uh, usually the like thing that's like a very hard part to do is like properly instantiating like the protocols so usually like you you could very easily like do it with a trusted like party that generates some string or you can like do some multi-party computation to avoid the setup and uh, the recurring uh, like um, view that we have is like that you have some statement you have like you make some information theoretic like statement about it and then you compile it you use some compiler to go to a snark and uh, we have this uh, pattern again like uh, which started from like the cs proofs then to probabilistically checkable pay, um, proofs and so on where the prover sends some commitment to the computation to the verifier, and then the verifier starts making queries at different points. And depending on like what type of uh, construction you're using, um, this could be like a polynomial IOP, a linear IOP, like what Ben was talking about, and so on. Um, so this is like what this triggered this new wave of uh, like snarks, realizing that this technique could be applied like in this case. So this is a normal snark, and this is like a pre-processing snark. So basically, you have a, a snark where some of the like computation, some like usually to have a succinct verifier, you need the way for the verifier to not have to read the whole like uh, circuit, but like just a short description of the circuit. And usually, this means that the common reference string that the verif that you have generated is like kind of in the size of the computation. Um, yeah, this uh, usually has this problem, so what can we do to fix it? Firstly, like the one thing that we know that works today is like the growth 16 and then with the previous uh, construction before it, which is like pretty fast, so like two group one elements, one group two, and uh, like a short amount of pairings. And uh, however, like the initial growth paper was not uh, like MPC friendly, then we had like a paper in 2017 which showed how to do it in a multi-party computation. And then we had one more paper which showed by Mary Moller, I believe, which shows that you don't even need like some of the assumptions that were in that paper. Um, however, like uh, what we really want is like to have a universal setup and how can we get that? Like the first approach was like, from my understanding at least, was like the tiny RAM or the von Neumann tiny RAM approach where you have a CPU and you run one computational step in the, um, in the snark and then you keep like iterating on that. The other approach was to have like that you initially have like some like reference string that is like common and like random. And then like each time that you have like a specific like a computation, you like try to derive like the specific, the specific string from that one. And uh, the one approach was like the one that we had in sampling. And the other one was like uh, by like GKMMM in uh, 2018. However, the common reference string was like too big in that case. And uh, we need something that's like both universal, updatable, and practical. Some review, okay, we have the polynomial. We want to commit the polynomial. The commitment is like short commitment to it. Ideally, we want this to be like very, very short and independent of the size of the polynomial. When the opening says that I'm going to evaluate the polynomial at some point, and I will also give you, and I will return you like an evaluation of the polynomial plus some proof but I calculated the, um, that attest that like the, I calculated the polynomial correctly. And the verifier will like return zero or one depending on if that witness uh, passes some things. So if you remove the polynomial, this looks very similar like to some Merkle tree commitment. However, uh, what we really want is to have like a constant size like uh, opening or like um, commitment. 
which if you have a constant size uh, commitment allows you like to avoid logarithmic terms in your like prover and verifier. Um, it seems that like all like constant size schemes require a setup, which is like what the cut uh, bilinear pairing one um, required. Um, so I have a question like if like at some point we're able to have a constant size without the setup. So currently we have uh, indeed the cut, then we have the dark, like um, which we heard about earlier, which are based on groups of unknown order. You can instantiate them with an RSA like um, number. So like depending on what you trust, maybe like you can use that. It's fast. Maybe has a setup, uh, or you can use the class groups, which are like slow, but they don't have uh, a setup and slow and also big. And there's like one other approach, which I believe is like what's used in fractal and um, like in uh, also in a polynomial commitment scheme by Vlasov and Panarin, which is like very similar to Fry, which is used primarily in Starks where um, you, you get though, which works, but it gets you like a logarithmic like a term overhead due to the Merkle, the Merkle trees that you're using. Um, so a caveat on the darks is like that if you notice like, okay, sure, it is transparent. However, it has this logarithmic term, which if you use a, a setup, it moves over here. And also another like um, part of the, of, the of the darks is that if you notice here, yes, indeed, it has like a logarithmic term improvement over the fry based protocols, but it's in groups of unknown order, rather in class groups, if it actually is transparent. And, um, and also this, like, this type of operation is like much, much, much more expensive than hashes. And from a practical st standpoint, like if the operation is like 100 times worse, um, it's, it's bad. So we need to like figure out like some way around it. What you could do here is that you could have like a hardware like acceleration, like have some ASIC that's able to calculate that. But at that point, like you're kind of like comparing apples to oranges. Um, and now let me talk a bit about the universal setup again from a practical standpoint, because the whole idea of the universal setup is that firstly, it is able to like be used like for any kind of circuit. And also if it's updatable, you're able to like to always trust it in some way. So, okay, I have the public parameters. I have a deterministic derivation for a specific circuit and I get like proving key A, verifying key A and I distribute them like to the people that want to use it. And if I have another circuit, I again do a deterministic derivation and uh, I get like another system. Um, the, this works very nicely in the sonic uh, construction. They show how you can do it very efficiently, this derivation, so we're good there. However, like um, there is like an implementation detail, as a researcher would say, like uh, with respect to like the continuous setup. And uh, let's say that we're in a deployed blockchain scenario. We have a miner who is like the natural party, like to have both the proving key and the verifying key, actually. And um, let's say that we have Alice that uh, does not trust this setup because reasons. Uh, so Alice goes to the common reference string, updates it in some way and then gets back like the new proving key and verifying key. Uh, the thing here is that if Alice wants to generate a proof um, for the, the circuit, um, who is going to verify that proof? In order to verify that proof, you must also get the updated proving key. So uh, the, the new like, uh, same structured reference ring must also be distributed to the people that you're trying to prove it. So the issue is that in this case, either Bob, in order for Bob to be like part of the same system as Alice, Bob must either receive the new proven key or like the miner has to keep like previous verification keys. And this might seem obvious that like, oh yes, of course, like this must be done if we're on different proof systems, if we're on different instantiations, like how are we gonna speak to each other? But, but from a practical standpoint, the continuous setup is not continuous per se, it's like continuously update, it's updated like in discrete time steps. So if you're in a blockchain scenario, you cannot really have a transaction which like says at any point in time, like update the setup because uh, it also has the danger that you can cause like some sort of race condition where I am preparing a proof uh, for the current instantiation of the circuit. Then somebody else comes in, contributes to the randomness, regenerates the new like circuit specific like reference thing. Then the miner updates their uh, like um, their, their verifying key and I'm left with a proof from the previous instantiation of the setup. So it would be nice in this case if I was either like able to kind of update my like already generated proof in some proof that is like with the new randomness, because otherwise I have to like regenerate like the proof. So like what would you do? Like I think the solution to that would be like to add like 
discrete like uh, updates, like let's say like mini ceremonies, like every week that the randomness gets updated, and your trust model kind of switches from like the one-time setup to the weekly setup. Um, again, from a practical perspective. Um, like the question I had like with this like new system, like okay, we have the system that was deployed on Sapling. Is it actually like dead? So. Sonic was like this initial thing which says, okay, we have an R1CS. We will encode it in a bivariate polynomial. Uh, that polynomial has to have like a certain structure so that I'm able to like t convert it with some way like to um, a univariate one. And then I'm utilizing like the polynomial commitment schemes that are univariate and have like nice properties. And uh, Sonic's performance compared to like growth, so we'll, this is like taken directly from the paper. So with bulletproofs, it does not like stand much to, like to compare due to the linear verifying of bullet bulletproofs. But compared to growth, Sonic is like much more expensive. And uh, in the health mode, yes, it is like a kind of good and it is like very practical for like blockchain applications. In the unhelped or the succinct mode, uh, what you call it, I believe, uh, it's like way, way worse. So we can see that it's like 273 exponentiations, like it's way too expensive. And it's like three ways that you can uh, like run Sonic. So either in the help mode, which uh, Sean mentioned, or the full succinct, or the like you can do client side parallel proof uh, generation. Because the way that the protocol works is that at some point I receive a challenge, and that challenge uh, does not have to change. Like if I have multiple proofs on my, if I want to like prove like 10 transactions, I do not need to like, I can reuse the challenge. So this allows me, this would be nice if I could somehow, as a miner, you could look at this like uh, the help mode being a synchronous protocol, where as a miner, like I received like uh, 10 proofs, which I already signed and I batch them. And the parallel proof generation is kind of like an asynchronous one, where I have like different, like um, uh, different like uh, ZIs and YIs, and like it allows me to um, improve my proof generation time. Um, and I think that like you could probably like utilize the halo construction in this uh, in this scenario to do this sort of like uh, aggregation of the proofs. Um, the plonk, what it does uh, is that contrary to like Sonic, which kind of is R1CS, it says okay, we're not really into the rank one constraint system situation. We're just gonna, gonna use this equation, which allows us to do like more complex uh, circuits. So it's kind of like an R1CS on steroids. And uh, the whole issue with uh, the whole hard part of Plong is not really like uh, proving uh, multiplication or addition. It's literally showing that like the output of like some gate gets correctly fed as an input to the next gate. And uh, the novelty here is like the very nice uh, permutation argument based on the Lagrange basis. And uh, if we compare, so Plong also has like a sibling called Aurora Light by Ariel Gabson, who is watching the live stream, I believe. Um, so, which has like this very nice trade-off, uh, in my view, again, for the like blockchain deployment setting, which has like a very much faster prover, but like a different, uh, like a bit like a bigger proof. So like the, this, what I'm trying to say is that like you have Sonic, Plonk, and Aurora, uh, on the Aurora Light, and like depending on like exa what exactly like deployment situation you want to have in your blockchain uh, or your application, you can pick one like depending on like which proof sizes fit you best. And uh, again, for like probably for uh, like actual deployment, like I think you're like hiding between you're thinking between Aurora Light or uh, Sonic Health. Um, and the Plong verifier is like here, like to show this how, like it's only if, um, like two pairings and like some exponentiations compared to like uh, like the Aurora the um, the Sonic, which is like much more expensive. Um, so now we have Marlin, which is also which was like done concurrently, like at least more or less uh, during with the Plonk and the dark work, uh, which uh, as we can see like from the graph, it has like more or less about like an order of magnitude difference with growth, and uh, like about like um, like four x like difference in verifier time. So how relevant this is like uh, at this point, uh, the verifier time I could argue that like. Um, after some point, like it no longer matters. You're fast enough to verify it. There is no way you're gonna have blocks that arrive like every millisecond, so you're most likely good. However, the proving time, uh, it uh, in in my view at least, like that's a very important thing. So we need to like be paying uh, paying attention to the proving time and the proof size. Um, so none of these constructions so far are like um, post quantum. So what can we do for that? Uh, we can, instead of using the current um, polynomial commitment schemes, we can have like a, um, we can like learn from the Starks and the Fry. 
and basically like use low degree testing to have like some way to prove that we need know the polynomial while using just hashes. And this is what uh, Fractal uses, which my understanding is that it's uh, like an optimization plus extension on Marling, and also the polynomial commitment scheme by Vlasov and Paranin, which has like the same like overhead as the Stark. Um, if we can compare like the verifier and the provers, like they're basically the same, and these are like uh, this is like a screenshot taken from uh, Alice talk in Simon's last month. Um, so we can see that like more or less like the verifier time and the prover time they're within like one order of magnitude with each other. So it is kind of good enough already. And the verifier time is like 10 to the minus two. So like okay, how many proofs are you gonna do? With like light blockchains already without any like zero knowledge proofs, they already like take too long like to even propagate the block. So even if like your cryptography is good, like eventually you run into like networking bottlenecks. And um, what's really interesting in this is like how, for example, Fractal and Aurora, which are like the two post quantum uh, snarks or starks, um, they have like huge argument sizes, like 10 to the fourth to 10 to the fifth as the constraint system grows. And Growth 16 and Marlin, like which are not like post quantum, they're like, you cannot even see them. So they're like very, very, very small. And if you're building a blockchain, again, you want very, very small. So probably like these are like, um, Marlin seems to be like a better choice like uh, with respect to, to that. And um, some like um, things that I like about growth is like, firstly, it's like rank one constraint system. Like we know it's R1CS. We have languages that we can use to compile down to it. Um, we know how to model it. It's great. It already is implemented like in multiple backends. We have like Sercom, Bellman, Li Lipsnag uh, using it. There are batch verifiers for it, like algorithms which like have like better, uh, you can like make ba verify the proof faster. There are GPU provers, which like there was a big bounty by Coda uh, like around this year. There were distributed provers, which Howard showed last um, last year, and also there has been like a real world bounty, like uh, a lot of money is like at stake if you break growth. And my understanding is that currently there was a paper released by Noah and uh, Mary, like maybe ten days or less, where they have a very nice inner product pairing um, inner pairing product argument, which they use like to make a BLS uh, verification, BLS signature verification more efficient for like a more. Uh, for many messages over the previous state of the art, but uh, my understanding is that like this could be used like for storage. If I, if I'm storing n growth proofs, I can kind of like aggregate them and store only log and have like total storage size of log n, which um, obviously it makes the blockchain smaller if you're storing proofs. And my thinking of it is that even if it does not allow you like to make proof for proof proving or verifying faster, it makes your blockchain smaller. So similar to how you can use, for example, cut through when you're doing mimble wimble to like kind of make your chain smaller, you can like kind of like do some pruning of your chain using this technique. Um, I, I hope the paper gets updated like to include some notion for this. And um, I'm I've taken like this picture from Vitalik's uh, blog post on Plonk and added like three more like um, pictures. So we see how like uh, as you go more to the left, like your proof size like uh, gets bigger, uh, but like your um, your your assumptions are like uh, improving. So like uh, top left, uh, we see Starks and Fractal with like very very minimal like security assumptions, but like pretty big. And like as you go more to the right, so like bottom right, the previous snarks, it's like growth, which is like tiny, but also per program trusted setup. And uh, what I'm really looking for is like some way to apply like the uh, all the um, innovations like found in Marlin and Sonic and Plonk primarily on the growth, like so that we can somehow like get a setup that is like um, at least verifiable. So like perhaps like you could use the ZK Shark construct, uh, which I did not have time to put in this in these slides. Um, that's about my talk. And uh, one question I want to pose to the audience is that like all the um, these constructions, they've kind of like gone off the way of the like true, the pure R1CS, and they kind of like add extra variables in their uh, equation to make it more expressive. Like Zach earlier showed how not only are you not uh, at R R1CS with fun in two and fun out unlimited, you have like uh, like gates uh, getting inputs from like gates that are in the next level. So is it worth it um, like to kind of like get rid of R1CS and like try to find a more expressive abstraction which perhaps reduces, like if you set some terms to zero to R1CS? Um, I, I don't know, like uh, this is like my question to, which I'd like to discuss. And thank you very much.